This video will discuss the virial theorem, which relates the expectation values for kinetic energy and potential energy of atoms and molecules. So starting out again with our hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model, we have a proton fixed at the origin, charge of plus E, mass of mp. We have an electron free to roam around in three-dimensional space. It has mass me and charge of negative E. It is some distance away from our proton R in spherical polar coordinates. It's more convenient to express our wave function in terms of spherical polar coordinates because our potential only depends on R. So we have our Hamiltonian, which is kinetic energy plus potential energy operators. Kinetic energy operator being minus h bar squared over two times mass of the electron times the Laplacian operator, del squared. Potential energy is the Coulomb potential, Q1, Q2 over R. So Q1 plus E, Q2 minus E, minus E squared over 4 pi epsilon naught R. The ground state atomic orbital for the hydrogen atom is psi 1, 0, 0, or the 1s orbital, which is 1 over the square root of pi, z over a naught to the 3 halves, e to the minus zr over a naught. A naught is the Bohr radius, which is 0 0.529 angstroms, or 0 0.529 times 10 to the minus 10 meters. Z is the integer number of protons in our nucleus, which is just plus 1. So that specifies all those values. And remember that the expectation value of a property in spherical polar coordinates is going to be the integral from 0 to 2 pi, d phi integral 0 to pi sine theta d theta, integral 0 to infinity r squared dr, then psi star nlm of r theta phi times the operator representing property a, a acting on psi nlm, that again a function of r theta and phi. So what we're going to compute in this video is the expectation value of potential energy and expectation value of kinetic energy, the average value of kinetic energy and average value of potential energy for our hydrogen atom model in the 1s state. All right, so if we do this integral for the potential energy operator, is integral 0 to 2 pi d phi, no phi dependence elsewhere, that gives us 2 pi. Integral 0 to pi of sine theta d theta, no theta dependence elsewhere, that gives us a value of 2. Integral 0 to infinity, and we're, we're just multiplying, our operator here is the potential energy function, so it's just multiplication, it's commutative. Similarly, our wave function does not have any complex parts, there's no i in it, no square root of minus 1. So we can just take the wave function squared times the operator. So the wave function squared gives us 1 over pi, gives us uh, z is 1, so it's 1 over a naught cubed, so 1 over pi a naught cubed in there. Potential energy operator minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. Multiply that times r squared e to the minus 2r over a naught. I've canceled out an r there and an r squared there, leaving a single r in the numerator. All right, so let's factor out a bunch of stuff that we can factor out there. What do I have? Looks like I have 4 pi over pi a naught cubed e minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught. That cancels out those 4s. Those pi's cancel. Integral, minus, integral from 0 to infinity r e to the minus 2 r over a naught. The most helpful integral in the world in this chapter is going to be the integral from 0 to infinity of x to the n e to the minus ax dx. This is equal to n factorial over a to the n plus 1. If this isn't on you know, your formula sheets or equation sheets, uh, it's if you have to look this up on Wikipedia, however you have to do it, but it may be helpful actually just to go ahead and try to memorize this value. All right, so we have n is equal to 1 here because we have psi 1, 0, 0. a is equal to 2 over a naught to make this formula look like minus 2r over a naught, and of course x is equal to r here. So we have our integral for our expectation value of the potential energy then becomes 
minus e squared over pi epsilon naught a naught cubed times, then we have n is 1, n factorial is going to be 1. 1 over a is a naught over 2. 1 plus 1 is 2. So we have a naught squared over 4 for this integral here. So this a naught cubed cancels with that a naught. What we're left with is the the expectation value for our potential energy is minus e squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times a naught. So this is interesting because this tells us that the kind of average value of the radius from the perspective of the potential energy is the Bohr radius a naught for this 1s function. Because this is q1, q2, and this is a distance. So this tells us that the average distance there from the perspective of the potential energy is a naught. And then remember that the value of a naught can also be given in terms of these fundamental physical constants, epsilon naught h squared over pi, mass of the electron times charge of the electron squared. So when I do that substitution, I can substitute in that value for a naught, and a lot of things end up canceling. This pi cancels with that pi. I get minus, four, minus me e to the fourth over four epsilon naught squared h squared. And if I translate this into h bar instead of h, what I get is negative mass of the electron e to the fourth over 16 pi squared epsilon naught squared h bar squared. You might notice this because this formula is very similar to the value that we had for the total energy. It's just the total energy times 2 whenever, whenever n equals 1. So the potential energy equals 2 times the total energy. So now we can derive the rest because the total energy is just the potential plus the kinetic energy. So the kinetic energy equals the total energy minus the potential energy, or the total energy minus 2 times the total energy for substituting that in. So the kinetic energy is equal to the negative of the total energy. Or if we substitute in for V, the potential energy equals negative 2 times the expectation value of the kinetic energy. So the ratio of our average, average potential energy to our average kinetic energy is equal to the very round number of minus 2. So this is what the varial theorem states. The varial theorem says that the expectation value of potential over the expectation value of kinetic energy equals minus 2 for all atoms and for all molecules. So this is not only true for the 1s atomic orbital for hydrogen. It's true of all atomic orbitals for hydrogen. It's true of all atomic orbitals for all hydrogen-like atoms with different values of z. It's also true for all atoms that have multiple electrons. It's true for molecules with multiple nuclei. It's true for anything where the potential energy is just a Coulomb potential generated by a bunch of nuclei. So this virial theorem ends up being very broad, and you can actually use it as a metric for when we have approximate wave functions for how good they are depending on how closely this expectation value ratio is to minus 2.